Howdy friends, so today we are going to talk about recording acoustic guitar for Anderson Ellswick's EP and the song Broken Man. Originally, this was supposed to be video four or five in the series, but I had the electric guitar content ready and the pedal steel content ready before I had a chance to do this. I kind of wanted to go back and redo a few things that I talked about when Anderson and I originally filmed this, but don't worry, I do have some footage of Anderson actually playing that I'm going to show in this video a little bit later, so stick around and watch that. But I want to talk about how we recorded the sounds for this record, because the acoustic guitar part for this song is pretty pretty simple. It's right up the middle. It's just one acoustic guitar. It's strumming or basically palm muting the entire time, depending on the parts of the song. So as far as production goes, there's not as much to talk about. But when you're producing a record, one of the things that I think about is what is it going to sound like? I want to try my hardest to get the sound that I'm hearing in my head as we're tracking it. And instead of having to craft a sound in the mixing stage, my preference is for sure to try to record the sound that I want to hear as it's being recorded, as the artist is playing the instrument down. And so for this song, we used this 2001-ish, 2003, I don't remember, Gibson J45. This belongs to Matt Goldman, and it sounds fantastic. If you're the kind of person that wants to record acoustic guitars, you should probably think about getting a J45 because they sound like guitars are supposed to sound on records. Just my personal opinion, but it's also an actual fact about acoustic guitars that Gibson J45s are the best. All right, so let's talk about microphones. These are the microphones that we use. Now, I've got them set up and framed up so that you can see how I stacked them up in the recording when Anderson was playing the guitar. What we have here is we've got an AKG C414 EB. This is from the 70s. And the microphone was in the omnidirectional pickup pattern. So it's picking up evenly all around the microphone. And I learned this from Matt. Putting a condenser microphone in omni essentially gets rid of a ton of the low end that you get from the proximity effect of the microphone being close to the guitar. So if you want a very close mic acoustic guitar sound, the first thing that you want to do or, the, or the, the place that you should start is probably trying the microphone in Omni because then you can get it a little bit closer to the guitar without getting all of the wompy low end that kind of builds up in an acoustic guitar from it being mic'd close. So that went into an SSL EQ, and the SSL I'm using just to carve out some frequencies that I don't like. Just sweeping around with a tighter Q and then finding a spot that, ooh, I don't like that. Let's cut out a little bit of that, you know, usually some low mids, and, and then maybe what I'll do is add just a little bit of air or sparkle, somewhere around 10K, maybe even 14K, and I'll just boost that just ever so slightly to add a little bit of a nice top end to the acoustic guitar. After the SSL EQ, we run into the Spectrosonics 610 comp limiter, and this is fantastic for tracking acoustic guitars because you can set it so that it's just shaving off that initial transient, just keeping it in check, and you end up with a guitar that is still, you know, dynamic, but at the same time, it's also, it doesn't ever poke out of the mix the way that acoustic guitars tend to poke out. So it's fantastic for that. That's about as far as I go with an acoustic guitar, especially if I'm going to layer a bunch of them, but this is an acoustic guitar that is going to be by itself mostly for the mix. And so there are some spots where I wanted to get a little bit more meat and a little bit more body out of it. Enter the RCA 44. Now ribbon mics are great because they have a little bit of slower transient than a condenser microphone. So you don't get as much of that spiky, uh, hard attack. Uh, it's a little bit softer of a sound. It's a little bit slower, which is really cool. Um, they're also darker, but one of the cool things that you can do with a ribbon mic is if you need more top end, if you need some brightness out of it, ribbon mics can take a ton of abuse with high frequencies. You can add a high shelf to it 
five, six K and just crank it up and it sounds really great. So uh, this one, I didn't EQ it at all on the way in. I just brought it in through the Universal Audio 4110 mic pre and it sounds great. And I'm just bringing that fader in, just, just pulling it in underneath of the 414 just to add a little bit more of the mid-range and a little bit more of the low end to beef it up where I need it, which is great because in the mix, I can automate this if a solo acoustic guitar part comes in or if there's a part where it's a little more sparse, I can just bring that fader in and add a little bit more of the meat that I need. So those are the two microphones that I used on the acoustic guitar for this song. Let's go into Pro Tools and let's hear how they sound. Let's go ahead and take a look at this acoustic guitar. Here's what it sounds like uh, in the track. And this is, again, this is just as we recorded it. There's no plugins on this thing at all here. And uh, here's what they sound like together. I've got them pushed up a little bit in the mix so that we can hear them. But here we go. I really thought I was doing better. I thought my heart and my dream. Sometimes late at night, I swear I hear your name in the wind. Well, I can't sleep. So I wanted to just let it play for you and kind of switch back and forth between the two microphones and mute the 44 and unmute it and then let you just kind of hear some of the differences between them. Um, let's go ahead and listen to just a little bit of the 414 and you can see too that the 414 has definitely had a little bit of compression added to it. You can see that the transients aren't nearly as tall. There's not as there's not nearly as much difference between the transient and the sustain as there is on the 44, which is the track that's below here. Um, especially if you zoom out, you can see that uh, the uh, the peaks are definitely not as high as they are on the 44. And let's go ahead and listen to it though. Both of these mics were the same distance away from the guitar. They were kind of placed, as you can see in the video with Anderson, they're kind of placed on an angle towards uh, the guitar, kind of symmetrical or asymmetrical, whatever, to his acoustic guitar. And uh, they were lined up, you know, on the same plane with one another. So we've got the 44 here and uh, the 414. And so let's listen to, we'll listen to the 414 first, and you can definitely hear that comp limiter doing some work. So let's go back here to the top of the chorus. But what's great about it is it still sounds very natural. This is just the SSL EQ and the comp limiter and that's it and I could probably just stick this guitar in the mix as is and maybe put a little reverb on it and it would be done. So let's go ahead and listen to the 44 by comparison. Okay, so the 44 is definitely a lot darker, but still has uh, a nice acoustic guitar sound. I mean, for something where you wanted just a darker sounding acoustic guitar, you could totally use that microphone and maybe just carve a little bit of the, uh, 
carve a little bit of the low mids, maybe maybe add just a little top end to it, and you would be there very with very, very minimal amount of work. So what I'm doing though, and what my kind of hypothesis was, was I said, let's use a condenser microphone that is an Omni and get a really bright, snappy kind of a sound, compress it, and then let's use the 44 and let's just tuck that back in underneath of it to add a little bit of mid-range. So I've pulled the 44 all the way down and I'm gonna just bring it up slowly so you can hear what it's doing. So if there's parts of the songs where I want a little bit more of that body, a little bit more of that low mid-range, low end, I can just bring that up and use it almost like it's an EQ. And if I need a smaller, uh, just brighter sounding acoustic guitar, then I can pull that 44 out and the acoustic guitar ends up not taking up as much space in the mix. So that is what we did for the acoustic guitars on basically every song on this record and we used different guitars to kind of change the guitar sound. Anderson has a really nice collection of acoustic guitars and so he brought his Martin D18 and his Martin HD28 and uh, he also brought his J45 and we also used Goldman's J45 on this track. So, All right, if you got questions or comments, leave them below in the description. If you found this video helpful, then subscribe, hit that bell notification so you know when we got more videos coming. I have been Matt for Capsule to Cone. I'll see you next time.